Hello everyone and welcome to US Computer Solutions for another how-to tutorial. My name is Joey. Today I'll be showing you how to set up the Netgear Nighthawk Mesh Wi-Fi 6 system AX1800. Now this is a 3-pack system. They also come as a 2-pack system. You don't need to have all these 3 devices if your home is not around 4,000 square feet. I'll keep a link in the description below for all the affiliated links for this device and what to buy if your home is less than 4,000 feet. I must inform you, I will do a fast explanation on these devices so you can exactly understand what they are and start the setup process. Now if you want to skip to the setup process, I'll keep a link in the description below for you to know where to jump to, but I highly recommend for you to hear the full explanation first, so please bear with me. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please consider clicking on that subscribe button below. Alright, let's get started. Right out of the box, we have a router, two extenders, an adapter, and of course a manual. And this router is smaller than usual, that's because it only has one ethernet cable and an ethernet for the modem to be connected to. You know, the modem that comes from your ISP or your internet service provider. This of course is going to give internet to both of these devices. Now you don't need to have these both devices connected at the same time if your home is not big enough. If you buy, you might have an extra one and of course the explanation that I'm going to explain in about a second and how this device work and if you really need them or not. But for bigger homes, I do highly recommend them because there are they are a simple option that you can give your big home a wireless signal boost so you can have a good internet signal in areas of that big home that you didn't have before or if you had a weak signal before. I also would like to mention one very important misconception and please please bear with me with this information that I'm about to explain about these devices. The misconception is that these devices make your internet faster. Well yes, with explanation and no, also with explanation. And why is that? Well, if you pay for high speed internet from your ISP or your internet service provider, this device will give you the highest speed that you actually pay for, up to 1200 megabit of speed. Most of what I've seen in people homes have about only 100 megabits, so we still need about 1000 megabit more to go to get that 1.2 gigabit or 1200 megabits so then why did you buy this device well the reason is so you can get better signal and better internet quality in far areas of your home especially if your home is huge also another main factor to get a new wireless system based on my experience that I've also seen in businesses and in homes is the modem that comes from your ISP the modem that comes from your ISP yes that modem that you rent and pay monthly for most of the time they are refurbished they are not new and they have a very weak build and they give many people problems disconnections uh, the wireless is very slow they give people problems so the best part is to put that aside connect that router to the ethernet of that modem and it will give your internet better signal in those areas in your home and it'll actually make it more better. You can also, uh, just a little tip for me, you can buy a modem, a separate modem, and I will keep a link in the description which modem to buy, and you can get rid of that device, you don't need to pay for it every month, and buy a separate modem, uh, just a standalone, they're called standalone, they're about $100, $150 each, and they will last you a lifetime, you don't have to pay uh, monthly for it, and it will give you a very high quality and crisp internet quality. Then you can connect this router to it, and it will give you an amazing wireless signal. Okay. Let's get started with the setup. Alright, first thing we're going to bring that router. This is the router that we are going to connect to our modem over here. Um, and the router, it comes with a sticker. It has the SSID or the name of the Wi-Fi and uh, a password over here is written. You can change this password to whatever you like. And I'll show you in the settings when we connect to the computer. Now, let's have this connected to the modem. The modem has one Ethernet cable coming from the ISP. So this is how your ISP modem should look like. It might be bigger. This is a standalone modem that I've spoken of. 
this one over here has an Ethernet cable coming from it and a cable that's going in. This is the ISP cable that's feeding the modem with internet. We are going to connect this cable or Ethernet cable to our new router like this into the area where it says internet or and it has a yellow color over here let's see if you guys can see over here and we are going to connect one of those adapters all of the adapters work for all of them they have the same power all right let's get disconnected all right and now we have it connected it's going to give us a light we're going to wait for it to finish blinking and we'll continue the setup and after that we will connect the extenders in the rooms and I'll show you how to get them set up and uh, connected let's put that down for a second and let's go to our computer and make sure that this wire all right so now let's connect to that wireless router with of course the SSID or the name of that wireless and the password that we saw on that sticker now of course each device has a different name and different passwords so the passwords will not work and you can of course change them and change the name to your liking and i will show you that in a second now if you're connected to your already modem or if you're connected already to your wireless keep in mind that we can we need to disconnect from it and uncheck uncheck this so it won't connect automatically to it all right and the name of the new router is called netgear 32 and we're going to keep it checked to connect automatically. And we're going to click on connect. It's going to ask for that password. And we're going to click on next. And we are going to wait for it to connect. Now, if it does connect and it doesn't open for you the setting menu, I will show you how to do that in a second. All right. It has connected. It's saying no internet. That's okay. Let's click on Chrome down here. Let's open a new browser and the address bar up there. Let's type in 10.0.0.1. Click enter. And it's going to give you this menu that says you can install the app on your phone. We're not going to do that because we are using our computer system. And we're going to click if you don't have a compatible smartphone, just click here. This is where we will access the settings or firmware of the device. And um, keep a link in the description below for the address, which is 10.0.0.1. Of course, you got to put the dots between 10.0.0.1. And we're going to agree to their terms. And then it's saying that it needs a firmware update and we're going to click on continue but of course if there's no internet connection coming from that modem sometimes we need to restart that modem in order for the software of the system to pick up the internet connection so what you have to do is sometimes turn off that modem and turn it back on but for the purpose of this video um, i'm showing you everything step by step of what's going on so turning both the modem and router off and then plugging both of them together now it's saying here configure the internet connection you are not yet connected to the internet do you want uh, genie to help you out you can either click yes no but I want to click uh, well yeah if you want to click yes you can continue to it but I'm gonna put no so we can see the settings that we can change if you want to and of course if you have saved from another uh, router you can pick it up over here but I'm gonna click on continue and yes so this is a username for the firmware itself for the firmware that is embedded in the system and it's going to ask you for a new password I highly recommend for you to put a complex password in this section or if anybody gets access to your internet they can access the Wi-Fi and give you a nice hack so over here we're going to put a new system password After inputting the password, it's going to ask you for security questions. These security questions are if you forget the password, you will automatically get a reset if you answer these questions correctly that you input yourself. So you can choose your question, for example, just for the sake of this video, click on this one and type in Nighthawk. And for this one, we can put, hmm, let's see, let's see, let's see. I don't have one. And then click next. 
and after that it's going to ask you for the username and password that you input it so the default one is admin and the password is okay and now we have access to that router now if you arrive this page and it says it's not connected to the internet that's either because it is trying to connect through a router of that modem and if it's a standalone modem if you click on internet over here if it's a standalone modem and I ask you these a few questions does your internet connection require a login you're either gonna click yes or no and I'm gonna choose no over here and over here internet IP address get dy dynamically from ISP normally if you have a standalone modem like the one I have um, and you click apply it should get the internet immediately but in my case I have another router connected to that modem and I want to have a another internet connection in my home or two different networks in my home let's say one for the business for example and one for guests um, you need to click on use static IP address and I wanted to bring this up because I've seen people who want to have two different connections in their home so this video is purposely for the two types so normally get dynamically from ISP and if your router is not giving you or if your modem that comes from the company is not giving you that internet connection click on use static IP address and uh, click apply just just click apply and let's see what happens. Normally, it should connect. All right, so after it finished updating, uh, right now we can see that the option is turned on. We're gonna click on home, and that is of the internet, should be good. So let's set up the satellites or the extenders. As you see here, it says zero extenders, and we'll come back to the computer, and I will show you the rest of the setup now we are going to connect the extenders and first thing we are going to click on a button over here that's called the sync button and we are going to click it for a few seconds one two three and it's going to start blinking from in front like this and right away we are going to go upstairs to the other extender and click the sync button on it and they should sync with each other and then stop blinking. Let's pick you up there now. Now we are upstairs. This is the extender or satellite that we're going to connect to the main router downstairs. This input over here is for if you wanted to connect a laptop uh, or a desktop computer to the ethernet after you connect this to the internet. So yeah, it can give internet through this ethernet port over here. So let's get this connected to the wall and we will wait for it to start up and right now what it is doing it is searching for that uh, router downstairs and when it does search for it and connects to it it's going to give a solid blue light all right there you have it guys now this extender or satellite is connected to the wi-fi let's run a test on our cellular device and see if it's connected we are going to run a speed test from speedtest.net. That looks promising. I only pay for 100 megabit per second, so it's giving me 100 megabit per second with all bars up, up here if you see. And of course on this laptop it will also be giving me the same. And this is how much I'm actually paying for, for an upload of 6 megabit per second. And we're going to go downstairs and uh, we're going to see this, continue the setup on the computer. And that will be it. We're just going to see the, we're just going to make sure that this extender is set up. I don't need to connect the other one, the, because in my home I only have a two-story home. And these, uh, the router and this one will be more than enough. And uh, let's get back to the computer. All right, here we are now back at the computer. Let's type that IP address in the Chrome up here. 10, 0, 0. Enter. Let's input that password. All right, let's exit out of here. And if you look down here below, we have number of devices six. These are the devices that I have already connected to that wireless device. Yes, I've connected everybody's to it to test it on. Now I have the number of satellites. One, this is the one that we set up and 
this is the one that we connected uh, together upstairs so it is running everything looks fine and if you guys have any questions regarding the setup if you encounter any problem don't hesitate to write me in the comments all right so now let me show you how to change the password or ssid uh, for this device and then we are going to click on here we're going to change the SSID name here. This is where you're going to name change the name for the Wi-Fi. And over here is the password. We're going to change it from that password, that sticker that came with it, to any password that you want, and click apply. But this option over here, if you uh, change it, you might have to reset up the wireless extenders or satellites all over again. I just wanted to point that out. And after you click apply, you can click home and then exit or get out of the system and then you will have to reconnect your computer again to it uh, using the new Wi-Fi name and password and uh, that's uh, about it I hope this video helped you out guys with the setup please consider subscribing to our channel like share and see you again next time you guys have a wonderful day